second interview. Let's go. Yeah. Here I have Ari Chambers. She is a host, a mixed media journalist, and the voice of Bleacher Report's women's platform, Highlight Her. With strong intention, Chambers' passion and purpose is to amplify the voices and women and showcase women in sports and culture. She most recently was named to the Forbes under 30 under 30. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, list in the sports category. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with Black Sports Network. We aim to give you your flowers while you are still here and celebrate your phenomenal work and dedication. So thank you so much for taking the time out to be with us this evening, this Thursday evening. Just got off of work. You are here. Phenomenal looking awesome. Let's do this. Thank you, sister. And I will take those flowers. You are welcome. (laughs) I'm excited. So First thing I have to ask, you are a Forbes 30 under 30, highly Mm -hmm. coveted. This is a big deal. Like this is huge. Mm -hmm. You're a recipient this past year, an incredible honor. What was going through your mind when you found out that you were selected? Well, it's funny because you don't know before the public knows. And I'm not a riser. So I woke up, apparently the list had gone out at like 8 a.m. I woke up in something, (laughs) the text messages. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. So I, it's amazing. You know, when you work in digital a lot, your parents don't really understand what you're doing, but they understand mm-hmm. what it. So I was mm-hmm. like, mom, dad, doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we landed with it. But no, it's just so, such an honor to know that my passion has like touched so many people that mm-hmm. it got me this recognition. Now, I never went in thinking that I would get Forbes. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even mm-hmm. like, that wasn't even like something that I was like, I have to get, I have to get, but yeah. I want to touch people with, you know, my coverage of the women's game. And so we see how that transpired and it just is rewarding. Absolutely. Like, congratulations. That is huge. Like there were some names on there. I was like, oh Lord, like this is, this is the real deal. Mark Cuban and Billie Jean King voted me in. So I was like, oh, okay. There's, <laughs> there's levels. <laughs> There are levels like that is a heck of a recognition. So it's amazing. That is phenomenal. So this year has been a lot, right? Mm -hmm. It's been a lot. 2020, to say the least, we've had the pandemic, we've had social justice, we've had the election, you know, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, it's been draining. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're accomplishing all these phenomenal things. You're doing it virtually, like you're, you're doing your thing. But how are you doing? How is Ari Chambers doing? Like, what motivates you to get through your day despite all that's going on in the world right now? I never know how to answer this question because Mm -hmm. I'm not one that can balance things like that. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm very empathetic. And then, Mm -hmm. especially this past summer when there were so many marches, Mm -hmm. I was right out there and and just inheriting that that conflicting. Like, it's like a strange dichotomy of like joy of being around your sisters and brothers with pain for us having to organize like that. So it was really enlightening to me and to, to make sure that no matter what I do, walking with purpose and being like audaciously and unapologetically black in everything I do and giving yes, that yes. empowerment, right girl black? God, um, I love giving it. that sense of empowerment to move that way in mm-hmm. every aspect. So it's funny because a lot of times before, I mean, it's not funny at all. A lot of times before these bigger companies were like afraid to let black creatives do their thing. Now Mm -hmm. they're looking for us Mm -hmm. for inspiration. Everybody wants to talk about sports and culture, Mm -hmm. but we are the culture. But now it's given me more empowerment and empowering, uh, you know, push forward to like Mm -hmm. really speak my truth through Mm -hmm. all the work that I do. Mm -hmm. But as far as like being able to unplug and everything like that, I get on Twitter. Uh, I'm very heavily involved in WNBA Twitter. So mm-hmm. it's like my safe mm-hmm. space. And I was like, let me see why Candace so on this trending. And I was like, never mind. Let me stay off this. Uh, off this. this. <laughs> but it's just like picking and choosing which um, social media lanes that you want to be, have visible to you and having to Absolutely. know to log off and mm-hmm. dissociate from that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Setting those boundaries, setting those boundaries has been a big one this year for Mm -hmm. sure. Like, you know, you are very active on social media. I did my, did my, did my little research, did my little research. (laughs) Look, 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 I had to, I had to come prepared, but your story is so interesting. I'd love for you to share it. How did you get started in sports media, what or who inspired you to do the work that you're currently doing with mm-hmm. Highlight Her? And please, please, please tell us more about this platform because I think it's phenomenal and 
I'd yeah. love to hear it. So I'm always trying to consciously stay away from journalism because my dad's a mass comp professor and I was like, mm. ah, I think I might be a defense attorney. Like, let's let's <laughs> go into law. Um, but ended up right where, you know, I was birthed into. My mom was an English major. My dad was, you know, obviously a communication professor. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, it's literally my birthright to carry this on. But my passion for the women's game came when I was like seven or eight years old, going to mm-hmm. NC State women's basketball game, seeing mm-hmm. Coach Dow being a woman um, head coach. And then down the street was Sylvia Hatchell. So you saw these prominent women figures. Um, and then, you know, to take it a step further, when the WNBA was like, you know, just beginning of seeing mm-hmm. Lisa Leslie. And then when Don Staley was there at Charlotte Sting, just being able to see them dominate in the women's basketball space, not to mention my best friend, Lakivia Boykin. She played basketball. She was an elite level player. She played at Wake Forest. Mm-hmm. And just being friends with, with, the basketball players growing up Mm -hmm. um, helped me see the other side, like, Hey, there's more to them than just what they do on the court. So I was always had an interest of telling their story. And Mm -hmm. then I was, I was in professional entertainment at Madison square garden. So we had to do the Knicks Rangers and the Liberty. Mm -hmm. And I would see in the summertime when they weren't being covered. So I took it upon myself to show up at my friend's hotel rooms and record interviews with them uh looking busted you know <laughs> looking dusty as heck but hey you did it across. look dusty just you, you dusty. did it you did it you did it <laughs> but posting that and and it because it was such a white space that mm-hmm. um, I was occupying that way the the following grew and you know people started to take notice and then Doug Bernstein of Bleacher Report to make a long story short because there was other there were other people along the way but Doug Bernstein of Bleacher Report was like, hey, can you create this platform from the ground wow. up organically, which mm-hmm. is another really like key gem to highlight her. It's all organic. Mm-hmm. We haven't sold anything yet. So I love it. It's not branded. It's just like literally the community that we've acquired over the past year and some change, maybe two years now. Um, but highlight her is just a community it represents sisterhood, empowerment, and just, mm-hmm. you know, we can showcase the, the great moments on and off the court and field, mm-hmm. um, but we can also showcase the fails because we don't need to tread lightly with women. We're just here. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We're here. We have, yeah. Sports aren't monolithic. The Black woman is a monolithic. Sure, sure. Women in sports are not monolithic. So mm-hmm. just covering all aspects of that and then leveraging my personal relationships with players mm-hmm in order to get their story across on the platform. So it's just a culmination of all that. And, you know, UGC is on it. So user generated content was huge for us last year because, you know, we were all at home. There were no live sports and people were just Excellent. creating their own content. So just to amplify that. And that's always been my purpose, just to amplify um, women in sport and culture. Gosh, I love that because, you know, we know the stats. Well, we know the stats. Yeah. The listeners may not know the stats, but women in sports are constantly underfunded, undermarketed, you know, frankly, not taken as seriously as men in their craft and they're grinding every single day. What drives you to persevere through like any negativity, through the trolls and create this amazing content highlighting women in sports? I've never had a confidence problem. So people's words never really stuck with me. You're just like, whatever. <laughs> I literally have never faltered in that way. Um, yeah. But just knowing that my purpose is bigger and mm-hmm. like as, as down as I might be one day, I'm like, mm-hmm. then, you know, during the George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor, um, there were WNBA players who have black children that can still mm-hmm. show up and perform. Mm-hmm. So just having that responsibility um, to keep pushing their stories forward because they deserve it. And like, who am mm-hmm. I to sit there? I mean, my problems are valid, but who am I to sit there and be like, I can't do this because I'm getting like trolled or I, you know, I feel a little exhausted today. I mean, right. we need to unplug sometimes, but uh, y'all need to get done. And my whole pa- like purpose mm-hmm. and passion is to to amplify women in that space. And so um, I would be doing myself a disservice and the game a disservice if I were just to be like, no, because somebody said we don't like women's sports. That's fine. If you don't like women's, women's sports, my job is not to con- convince somebody to like them. And that's an, another thing that, about me. I'm not going to go back and forth with you about why you should. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you why I'm passionate about it. And if it sticks with you, it sticks with you. It doesn't, it doesn't, but it's not my job to convert you. My job mm-hmm. is to sprinkle my passion everywhere. I love that. I love that. Just keeping it pushing. The people yeah. will obviously come and be in the community if they want to be. If they don't, keeping it pushing. Now, you have amassed quite the following on social media and both personally and professionally, right? So 
while also interviewing some of the biggest names in sports, like you have gotten some phenomenal interviews thus far in your career. What does it mean to you to be such a visible, uh, be in such a visible position as a black woman like you are? I have that responsibility to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, My visibility and my platform, I I always try to be intentional about the things that I post. Mm -hmm. And what's really big about me is like, I don't code switch. So like, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm showing up here in a Snuggie and then, you know, y'all gonna get this Snuggie. Um, But like, I show up to work with my door knockers, with my my curls and I just, I want people to see through, you know, through my following, through my social media, like, hey, it's possible to be completely yourself. I mean, this might not be you and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Be you and, and align with the proper things and people are going to love you for you. So I guess, you know, with my following my platform, I have the the, the luxury of getting able, being able to reach more people. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, my following is not at all where I want it to be. I'm like, mm-hmm. like okay, follow this where y'all at. Oh but, my gosh. The, but the 20,000 that do follow my personal, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, here's, you know, here's what I have to say and really mm-hmm. like be very, very speak with conviction mm-hmm. and always address things and take a stance on things. That's that's the responsibility that I have. And for highlighter, again, we already know what that's mm-hmm. about you know, staying that community, staying that sisterhood, staying that empowerment um, space for women to just be be happy and celebrate themselves. Absolutely. I mean, so you have 20,000 followers, right? Like imagine if 20,000 people were just like in a room listening to you speak, waiting for you to post something or do something cool or like post some dope content. Like I think people, I don't know, they don't think about that conceptually sometimes. So that's like a heck of a following. I don't know. I think it's cool. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I love it. So speaking of growth, you are a very multifaceted multi-dimensional woman you have modeled you do well you did competitive cheer you're an ivy leaguer how these interdimensional experiences helped you in your current role that you have with sports media and how do you build upon them one thing that i never actually talk about um Mm -hmm. is how modeling has shaped my perspective on a lot of things people don't realize when you're when you first get to new york to model Mm -hmm. you're in a model department right Mm -hmm. i was rooming with a girl from latvia estonia ireland and china oh wow give you that worldly perspective that Mm -hmm. like people are going to have different experiences Mm -hmm. so you carry those different cultures with you it opens your eyes up to things um modeling teaches you really really thick skin y'all think sports is bad go into modeling (laughs) your agency like turning like Go into a bikini. We've got to take your measurements in front of everybody or go to a client who doesn't even look up from you when you're trying to walk for them and just say, have a nice day and just doesn't even care. So it's like there, I mean, there's this level of abuse really that, you know, PTSD. I was going to say. <laughs> but Ooh. it does prepare you for rejection. It does prepare you to be able to shake off those nodes. It does prepare you to meet different people. They might not be your cup of tea or mm-hmm. different cultures that you might not understand. You really have to open up your mind to understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, so that prepared me for, you know, going into, you know, the sports world where there are going to be people that tell you no and reject mm-hmm. you. Don't want to see what you have to do. And, and with the different you know, sports having to mold your brain being like, okay, I'm all about basketball, but I can learn netball. I can learn handball. These things aren't that big over here, but mm-hmm. you know, there's an international following. Mm-hmm. So things like that, it's just modeling really, I literally, this is an enlightening point right now because I haven't even thought about it until like this very second today, mm-hmm. but yeah, modeling really prepared me for the sports world because it really, it, it gave me thick skin and perspective. Absolutely. That's why I was so interested to like kind of hear your answer because like modeling is grueling. You know, you're constant, Mm -hmm. so many different types of people, brands, different hands going everywhere, doing all these different things and the visibility having to like, you know, work outside of yourself and whatever's going on internally to be able to perform and do phenomenal photography and all of that stuff. So kudos to you. That's amazing. Um, And then like the cheerleading, um, that taught me teamwork. So, you know, in order to stunt, you there are three people under you typically. So mm-hmm. you, you all don't work together, the wire won't stay up. And so there's that that sense. And then because um, cheerleading is actually an underserved sport because people mm-hmm. just can't acknowledge the fact that it is a sport. When I'm like, mm-hmm. how for balls, we can throw people, but I digress. Um, <laughs> but having a fight for, for cheerleading, being respected, is nothing different than me fighting for women's sports being mm-hmm. Respected. So 
that's my little thing. No, I love that because mm-hmm. I think uh, cheerleading is the hardest sport out there. You have to be flexible. You have to have some type of rhythm because y'all be doing like mixed dance routines on top of stunts and like you have to be limber. Gosh, like I look at that. People don't realize how much oh. endurance takes for a two minute, 30 second routine. Ooh. Like, just think of a sprint for two minutes and 30 seconds, but you're also lifting. Oh, so, I don't want to think you're also your body. <laughs> so like, just look, let's put that out there. And you're also doing all those things. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're trying to do it gracefully and you got judges and all it like, no, I, I've seen those YouTube videos and everybody it's intense. Like the competition is intense. So I'm from Maryland, I, so that's the F5 and Maryland twisters. I was heavily suggested. Uh, I remember the twisters. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then fame, fame is up there too. And that's, that's mm-hmm. what but, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. Sidebar, sidebar. (laughs) Um, What is something unique that you have discovered since covering women in sports? Like what's something unique that you can say, like women in sports do this, or this is how it's different from anything that I've ever done before. Uh, I didn't realize, okay. Being in a basketball bubble, you don't realize how Mm -hmm. many sports there are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've, I've learned about, I mean, obviously we know softball exists, but learning about their league and athletes mm-hmm. unlimited, I think they have a great initiative that's mm-hmm. player first, player forward and player mm-hmm. driven. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just seeing how athletes can organize together and create their own. For sure. space, um, mm-hmm. That's been really cool. And again, like what I mentioned before, sports not being a model, it's like what these women, like I can praise AJ Andrews for like jumping over a fence to catch a ball. Mm-hmm. But then I also, we learned from each other because I also taught her how to like runway walk and she walked in fashion week. Last wow. Week. So if you want to see that bit, it's on highlighter, but um, just having those experiences with different players mm-hmm. has just been so cool. And then the mm-hmm. mental health aspect, I keep forgetting or the public keeps forgetting that these mm-hmm. players are human too. And so just mm-hmm. not just looking at them as you know the entertainment they're also humans who have emotions that are you know some deal with mental health um Mm -hmm. and trying to stay above water some Mm -hmm. are mothers um some you know uh WNBA has recently thank god Lasia Clarendon came forward Mm -hmm. and just fighting for trans um athletes to be involved and just be recognized and yes welcome into the space so just seeing that that type of um, mm-hmm. forward movement and empowerment within it has been great. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now you are a woman in the space clearly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you feel as a multimedia journalist, do you feel supported as a woman in a predominantly male driven industry? Like that's tough. I mean, yes, you have to have a, a thick skin, but you know, I don't even know what the exact percentages are per se, but it's very lopsided in terms of like, who's in sports, who's not, who are at the high level executives, who's doing this work. And here you are doing this work. How are you feeling? How do you feel supported? So when I was still independent doing it, um, Mm -hmm. I got a lot of support from the WNBA fans. They Mm -hmm. were family. They still are my family. They've always believed in me, given Mm -hmm. me that Mm -hmm. encouragement. Then I was fortunate enough to meet like LaChina Robinson mm-hmm. years ago and walked up to her and said, you're my goals personified. I want to be you. And she was like, I already know who you are. Take down my number. And I ended up going um, to visit her a couple of times during the summertime. Um, and I got to shadow her and work with her. Um, wow. So I just always had these fortunate situations where my tribe has been so strong that I've mm-hmm. always felt empowered. Mm-hmm. I'm lucky enough that my department at Bleacher Report, mm-hmm. House of Highlights. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. such a, like, we have the most diverse group, I'm pretty sure. Um, wow. and, and, like, I get to work alongside Black women, Black mm-hmm. men, um, you know, Hispanic men and women, and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, our white allies. It's mm-hmm. just really dope to see us all come together and just be Love such it. a family. Um, but that's not, I, I recognize that that's not everybody's situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm very lucky, very grateful, and very blessed that it has been my my path. Now, am I probably oblivious to all the negativity? Uh, yeah, like, um, but but again, I've always stepped forward in confidence and not really been like, oh, who's not supporting me? I just focus mm-hmm. on what you are. Absolutely. And you kind of touched on something like, you know, in your workplace, it's diverse and it's, you know, awesome and inclusive, but obviously that's not everywhere. You know, this past year alone, we have seen how significant diversity and inclusion is, how we have to strive to increase our racial equity. Um, how important is 
intersectionality to you as a multimedia journalist, as a brand runner, as a Black woman, and how are you highlighting these intersections in the work that you do? Well, beyond that, I would really challenge all the companies that claim that they're about culture to define what they mean by culture. That's like the first thing. Like, let's just start there. Like, forget the intersectionality. Um, Thanks. Figure out why you're so pressed to push culture if you don't want to acknowledge it. Mm. Um, mm. We're really the ones who are the weight behind that, pushing mm-hmm. forward. We define mm-hmm. what cool is, what mm-hmm. right now we define trends. We're trendsetters by nature. Absolutely. I mean, you see, you see now with the acrylics, with the 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 braids and natural styles. Everything, like, everything. I want to get into the layers of protective styling and why it's anyway. But <laughs> you see, <laughs> but, but you see, you see this popping off, and you have mm-hmm. to give homage to like the derivative of that. You have to really be like, okay, where did it come from? So when it comes to intersectionality, I'm challenging bigger companies to mm-hmm. be allies and co-conspirators against the things that are holding us back. Um, and it's my job to show up really, really black, mm-hmm. which is really, really me. I mean, great. That's again, not monolithic. I don't want to speak for every black person out there, but for I'm sure. just very much like say her name, black lives matter, period. Y'all gonna get this word. Period. I'm not gonna y'all. Um, when I have the capacity to educate y'all and that's reflective in my work. Um, mm-hmm. and I haven't faced any pushback from my company mm-hmm. because they, they, they're standing back and letting me speak up and they're empowering me to do so. So I really encourage everybody out there to either align with people like that or, you know, go independent and really mm-hmm. make sure it's beyond intersectionality, really just be audaciously black, you know, so that they can, <sighs> like y'all can stomach that. <laughs> rooting for, rooting <laughs> for everyone black. Yes. <laughs> I, I love it. I mean, there's power in being your authentic self and bringing your authentic self wherever you go, whether that's work or out and about or whatever, it's you, it's unapologetically you. And by doing that, you give people permission to bring their unapologetic, genuine selves to wherever they're going. So I love that. That goes with women too, like women too. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want it to seem like just black because I am really, really black. But like- (laughs) Black, 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 black. It, it, it makes some people uncomfortable, but I'm like, are you uncomfortable when we're having women's marches? Are you uncomfortable right. when we're, you know, protesting outside of Stonehenge for, for gay rights? Y'all understand mm-hmm. that. So why can't you understand when you're walking down the streets of Manhattan screaming Black Lives Matter? Why does it all have to come from a place of defense? So mm-hmm. it's like, if my blackness makes you uncomfortable, then you're probably mm-hmm. the problem. Um, and just really challenging people to know that, like, hey, we have to fight for these things. We have to include yes. uh, a tone that's reflective of what you guys think is the culture, mm-hmm. the fine culture. So. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's always an issue when you when you mention something black. It's like, but, but y'all were just fighting for we just, everything. We, we understand. We were just out there. Marches. We understand women's rights marches. Yeah, we were there. We were out there. We were out there with y'all. What's going on? Right when we need support. Um, speaking of women's marches, this interview in particular, this one, will air during Women's History Month a month that oftentimes does not highlight Black women enough uh, and the beautiful intersections that we have to offer. When you think of celebrating Women's History Month, what stands out to you uh, in your mind that is a part of our history that you can relate to? I think that anytime we can celebrate women, in particular Black women, Mm -hmm. uh, changing the game, that's that's just really dope to see. there's so many to list and I'm not going to do anybody a disservice of, you know, leaving anybody out. So I won't, mm-hmm. I'll leave it up open, mm-hmm. but just knowing that we're shape shifting mm-hmm. is really incredible. Also, Terry Jackson told me about five years ago, um, you shouldn't be satisfied with being the only. And so mm-hmm. if you're looking to your left and your right and you're the only woman in the room, if you're the only black person in the room, that's not something to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's acknowledging the fact that yes, there are pioneers and we are so grateful for them. But how are Absolutely. we going to move the needle forward and, and really occupy these spaces and show mm-hmm. like, hey, we're here for, for good mm-hmm. and forever and we're excellent at it. And, and that goes between sports any, and any other walks of life. Like mm-hmm. we're literally here. <laughs> we've, carried, we've carried the weight of everything. And even if we didn't, we are here and we're excellent at mm-hmm. it. And so it's like, celebrate that. Just be, be happy. Mic drop. I'm, I'm just dropping the mic now. 
Okay, and the interview now, no, I'm just playing. Um, nah. <laughs> I want to ask you, what is next for Ari Chambers? Like, what do you want your legacy to be going forward in 2021 and beyond? I want to be able to bust open the door so much that people don't have to struggle to try to open it. Mm. Um, I want the next gen to know like, Hey, you can show up as yourself. Mm. Like if you want to get a blowout, get that blowout. If you want to have a blowout, blowout, by all means, if you want to show up curly, by all means, if you Mm -hmm. want to have a by all means, and you can show up as yourself and be just as respected Mm -hmm. and and compensated for your talent. Um, I also want to, be an example of how hard work pays off mm-hmm. because we're not entitled to anything. And that's mm-hmm. another thing. We're not just entitled just because we're black. Um, show up excellent, show up, do your job. Mm-hmm. And and I want to make it so like me and my tribe and my peers and the ones who came before me have set such a precedent that they won't have to, the generation, the next generation won't have to fight so hard to prove that blackness be, belongs. I love all of that. This interview has been like, oh, just so affirming and so beautiful and just everything. So thank you so much for your time. We're not done yet. I have some some quick fire questions for you. Basically, this or that questions based on this interview. I need either an answer in one sentence or less or one word. Cool. Cool. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. But favorite athlete interview. Candace Parker always. Ooh, East Coast or West Coast? East Coast, all day, nine one nine, baby. North <laughs> <North> Carolina. <laughs> Your favorite city that you visited? Oh, okay, okay. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> I really liked Novosibirsk, Russia, because I felt like okay. every, <laughs> everything was like it felt like everything was in Siberia. So I can't explain it. Just go to it's it's right by Siberia. Okay. The, that it's like very rich in culture and that everything just feels so like vintage. <laughs> wow. I was, that was not an answer I was expecting. <laughs> okay, cool. What would you be if you weren't a multimedia journalist? What would you be doing? Girl, I'd probably still be pumping through runways. Um, okay. <laughs> just, just, just is what it is. <laughs> Shoot. I'm not mad at you. Best piece of advice you have ever gotten from a mentor. The Terry Jackson piece. Mm-hmm. Don't be satisfied with being the only. Love it. What's your go-to restaurant in New York City? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my rock star lifestyle might not make it. So <laughs> after I stopped modeling and stopped getting these like luxury meals, uh, I love the V spot. It's right at St. Mark's and it's a vegan Latin infused cuisine. And I would okay. get my, my, my jerk wrap and it was really good all vegan okay i love it (laughs) fun facts okay fun facts y'all fun facts um what's your favorite thing to do on an off day hold my dog tiger he's three pounds oh that's so cute i love it but you know he's there i love it and the last thing is what is the first thing you are doing when the world opens up like when we're actually back to normalcy not what we've kind of what people been doing the past couple of months but like full normalcy no masks outside just breathing fresh air or you know okay uh this is gonna be work related i miss our office because we had rose on tap so oh. i really 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 want to go back to bleach report okay <laughs> give me some nice rose it sounds so nerdy and so like girl wet but our rose on tap was so cool and it was great mm-hmm. that's so convenient like Oh my gosh. Any companies that are going to be listening to this, y'all hear this? Rose on tap? Like, yeah, Rose on tap, cold brew on tap. We got two kitchens, a basketball court. It's lit. Three stairs. Come visit whenever. And I, yeah. a, like, I have pride in like where I work. So like, I'm like, I can't wait to give tours again. Yeah. I can't wait to pull around. So you're more than welcome once the world opens back up to come through the office and turn up. Listen. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm actually the person who's going to take you up on that offer. But you have been amazing. Thank you so much for interviewing. Thank you for taking the time out with us on this Thursday with Black Sports Network. And this will be airing in March. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm going to turn off the.